I'll just give you a quick overview of the next step in the project. I got the gantry riser fully assembled, ready for paint. They've been fully drilled now with every other mounting location plus reinforced with some screws like I mentioned I was going to do earlier. You can see the cross braces uh, now glued into the back as well. Uh, I've got the gantry sitting on there. It's just clamped on temporarily um, along with the uh, linear motion rails hooked back up to the gantry risers. Just make sure everything rolls nice and smooth and it does. Um, I also got a level sitting on top, not to check level, but uh, just really to check how straight the gantry is and it's uh, there's no daylight in, in between anywhere in there. So that's a good thing. Now I did notice when I was pushing down on this gantry, you know, I don't know how much force I was using, probably a good amount, um, that there was a slight bow uh, when I did it in the middle, you know, a few, few thousandths or so. Um, and I got a little bit worried, but then I remembered I still got a big four inch piece of steel that's going to get bolted all the way across that. So that's going to stop that altogether. Um, also, we got the dado here in the back, which is going to get reinforced. And again, I'm going to make the move to instead of using plywood like I originally planned and used hardwood here, I'm going to go ahead and use hardwood again there to add the added support just because I got it laying around. So you could probably use uh, plywood if you wanted, but again, it's a critical piece. I'd rather get as much reinforcement as possible. And uh, gluing a hardwood piece in there uh, is not going to mess with anything as it expands and contracts, especially if it's sealed. It, it, it's not an issue. So that's where we're at now. I'm going to go ahead and get the steel drilled and assembled and move on from there. All right, so I got that piece of steel drilled now. This is a piece of steel that runs the entire span of the gantry. And I went ahead and just uh, decided to do uh, two holes all the way down nine different locations. So that's going to be 18 bolts total. It's going to hold it nice and tight against there so there's not going to be any flex. Um, one thing that I did find out while trying to do this was I spent about a half hour marking out on the uh, gantry part itself, the wooden part, the location of those bolt holes. And I went over to the drill press, drilled one hole, took it off, went to go check it and found that I was off close to a sixteenth of an inch. So decided that's not a good idea. I'm actually just going to drill the, all these holes in place. So what I did was I cut the filler strips exactly like I did for the uh, x-axis over there, laid the bar on here, put the filler strips on, clamped it on, made sure it's straight everywhere that I'm going to be doing it. I run the clamp right across where the holes are going to be drilled and I'm just using a nice brad point bit and going down the entire length of this and uh, going ahead and screwing them in with the uh, lag bolts, a washer, and a lock washer. And I'm going to do that all the way down and that way I can be sure that this bar is mounted correctly and uh, not introduce any error into the drilling operation. Alright, I got this all drilled and bolted up. Went together no problems. I should have just done it this way to begin. So save yourself trouble. Don't try and use a drill press. But I wanted to address this issue of this one hole that I did do on the drill press. You can see how it's not in there right. I'm going to show you how to fix that in case you run into a problem. It's actually quite simple. Alright, as you can see, I got all those bolts out of the top and I took the steel off and all I did was remove the steel right to here. I wanted to keep its orientation until I could get it marked. So do yourself a favor, this is one of those checkpoints. Take a magic marker or something and just mark the top of this so that you know what side is what. It'll help out a lot in the long term. Uh, I got a chisel here because what I did was I noticed that some of the holes, well pretty much all of them, had a little bit of mushrooming going on after I drilled the hole so I just came across the top real quick and shaved it nice and flat. That way nothing's going to be pushing that steel up. It's just a little detail thing that goes a long way. Uh, and here's how we're going to fix this hole. This is the one that, that is messed up. Um, so really simple. A dowel. This one happens to be 3 8 inch. Proper size drill bit for that. And some epoxy. I'm going with epoxy rather than regular wood glue so I can speed this along. No reason to take a long time to wait for it to dry. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it a little bit proud. Tap it in there and come back with a flush cut saw, take off the top, and then go ahead and put the steel back on, bolt it in a few locations, drill that hole, and that's it. It's done. Now there were two other things that I got to do while I have this steel off um, in order to get all the prep done, and that is I have to count, I have to go ahead and cut a dado across the top for the uh, pieces that are going to be holding the gear track into the top for the rack and pinion system, and also I have to drill the holes through the top, two of them, remember to house those long bolts that screw into the gantry. So now that this is off, it's perfect time to do this. 
Alright, I have a few updates here. First, I just wanted to show you what this uh, looks like bolted up. So, I got two bolts on either side, and there's four bolts in the back, but I don't have the top two in right now. Strong enough as it is, I'll put them in there once it's time to uh, final assemble. But I already have it pre drilled and everything. But I just wanted to show you it rolling nice. Also, just wanted to show you that uh, this came out pretty square. I don't have any shims on there yet. But I've tested it uh, multiple points all the way across this. And there's very, very little daylight in between here, no matter where I have it. So, you know, maybe cutting up a soda can or something like that and using it as a shim. That might even be too much. I might have to use a piece of paper or something even thinner if I want to go that far but uh it is nice and square and it's pretty much the same height all the way across but even then uh, that could be adjusted with just surfacing the spoil board uh, but I do have some major updates I want to show you um, and um, we'll go from there all right I, I want to talk about the center of gravity on this gantry what I've done is just mocked up pretty much how this is going to sit off of this gantry we're gonna have the linear carriage that rides across that piece of steel right here then we have the whole Z assembly which is what moves up and down then the router and then the router plate that's going to go in between there basically what you end up having is this piece right here from the back of this into where your router bit my router bit's going to hit is about 10 inches so um, in hindsight if I was going to be redoing this again I would actually have built out this back side probably another foot or so you know maybe not you don't have to extend it, the bottom part out that far but that way because I'm, I'm really not going to have any any way that I can cut from here to about right here I'm losing all that area uh, because of how far out of the gantry this thing sticks so uh, that would be the one major revision that I would do at this point in time and on paper you don't really notice it until you get all this stuff together um, but you know it's kind of a lot of dead space so not a huge ordeal, I'm still going to have plenty of area to cut what I want, but uh, if I was going to do it again, the same way that I kind of did this one, how, how it hangs over the front, is exactly how I would do the rear, except that I would do the rear more than I've done this side. Alright, because, you know, obviously I wanted it to be open like this anyways, to do the mortise and tennis. So that's, that's one revision. Alright, the next revision I'm going to do, um, and this is an issue or it may be a non-issue, but I'll show you what I'm talking about. I went ahead and just put a clamp on the steel track. I'm going to pull a carriage until it hits that clamp. Now the gantry can't move anymore. But if I put enough force on this side over here, you probably can't even detect it on the camera. But I can maybe flex it about a sixteenth of an inch on this side. Now we're talking a four foot spin. So I'm, I'm getting about a sixteenth of an inch. So what I'm going to end up doing, and of course I don't have this put on here yet, I'm actually going to extend it out far enough that I can t tie it into these two bars and run another brace on this side and maybe put, you know, just, just screw it in all the way down. That way it'll make it harder to flex. It's probably a non-issue because once the gear is locked into this track and the motors are turned on, I doubt it would even let it move. This, this would have to be skipping teeth over here for me to be able to do that. And it's going to have gear track on both sides. So it may be a non-issue, but I'm going to go ahead and fix it structurally and not rely on the me mechanics to uh, hold it in place. That way there can't be any failure um, once this is up and running. And lastly, the third revision as of right now, um, these wheels are great. They allow me to roll it around. They lock, they hold it in place, but unlock, unlike just a regular tool bench or something like that where you can have some movement on it, um, these are just rocking a little bit too much for me. So I'm going to go ahead and build some um, I don't know, levelers or something that come down on the ground and probably take it right up off these wheels for when it's in use. I don't want it to rock when it's in use, so maybe I'm just being nitpicky right now, I don't know, but um, it's nice to have it mobile, but I, I'm not liking it so much moving around even that little bit.